Two teens intentionally run over by a driver in Abbotsford. Low visibility is the cause of a 2021 helicopter crash, and it's a common problem. More security for parliamentarians amid protests for Gaza. Bill Blair touts Canada's military spending, and black rhinos in Kenya have been moved to a plane that they haven't lived on in 50 years in the hopes of growing their numbers. Good morning. It's Friday, February 16th. I'm Nora coming to you from Victoria, British Columbia. Here are your headlines. First to Abbotsford, where two teenagers were run down by a driver in the middle of the afternoon. The report from Global News' Amy Judd said that investigators aren't fully sure what happened, that there was an argument before what Judd calls quote-unquote collisions, which is a weird word to choose considering it makes it sound like the teens were in a car at the time of being hit, though the rest of the article does not make it sound like that was the case. There is a video that quote shows a car racing towards the teens before a hitting sound followed by screaming, unquote. A man is then seen led away by paramedics and a cop. A driver is in custody and the teens were sent to hospital where they were in stable condition. Said Constable Art Stelly, quote, when we discovered the fact that it was an intentional incident, obviously we have no tolerance for this behavior, especially regardless of the age of the victims. Intentionally using a vehicle as a weapon is something we do not tolerate here, unquote. Wait, wait, wait. It's the the age of the victims regardless i mean it kind of makes it worse that these guys are kids doesn't it i mean I don't, I don't know maybe it doesn't maybe it's always bad i don't know i do like the addition there though of the we do not tolerate this here as if running people down intentionally with your car is tolerated elsewhere for some reason the report doesn't include the guy's name Next, to findings of a Transport Safety Board of Canada investigation into a fatal helicopter crash in Nunavut in 2021. Marcus Dyke, Stephen Page, and Benton Davey all died in the crash. The trio was flying over to survey the Lancaster Sound polar bear population. A combination of snow cover and featureless terrain, plus overcast sky and snow squalls, all created dangerous flying conditions, quote, flat light and whiteout conditions, unquote, which led the pilot to a sudden loss of being able to see the horizon. There have been 13 investigations from 2010 to 2018 where commercial helicopter pilots lost spatial awareness, quote unquote. Helicopters are twice as likely to lose spatial awareness than our airplanes, and yet regulations for helicopters are less stringent. And side note, you should read Wind, Sand and Stars by Antoine Saint-Exupéry if you want to hear an account of flying in like, I don't know, 1915 without being able to see the horizon and how Saint-Exupéry flies for miles upside down trying to figure out how to stabilize the plane upright. Or I think that's something he wrote. I don't think I just made that up. Hmm. The TSB has recommended that the company needs to make sure that pilots can be able to operate a plane even if visibility is lost, and that helicopters have technology that can help a pilot navigate a sudden loss of visibility. Some operators have already added these to their fleet, but TSB Chair Kathy Fox says that some operators need to be forced to add these tools to keep people safe, and therefore regulations are necessary. Fox also recommended stricter regulations for single pilot operated aircraft when flying in a zone without an air traffic control infrastructure. The helicopter in question was an AS 350B2, operated by Great Slave Helicopters. The Federal Minister of Transportation has to respond to the recommendations within 90 days. Next, recent Palestinian protests are being used as an excuse to ramp up security around Conservative MP and Deputy Leader of the Party, Melissa Lantzman. This is after her office was postered. The Canadian Press's Mia Robson writes that when asked about the security detail that she's been seen with, the party didn't say what made them make this decision. But Lantzman's not the only one. Jagmeet Singh has also been surrounded by RCMP officers seen in Ottawa and in Edmonton at a recent NDP caucus retreat. Maybe he's worried about how his caucus is going to react to this decision to prop up Trudeau forever. (laughs) I, I, I don't know. I mean, probably not. When asked what was up with the extra security detail, NDP flack Alana Cahill didn't give any details about why they've asked for a security detail for Singh. Just that they are following, quote, the recommendations that are provided to us, unquote. Not clear who is providing what recommendations. 
And Melanie Jolie has also had protection regularly seen around her as well. Robson mentions the anti-Israel protesters who appeared at her home in January as a possible reason. Harjit Sajjan is also, quote, closely flanked by police who even accompanied him right up to the door of the cabinet room this week, unquote. Sajjan didn't say why, but Robson notes that he does get a lot of threats. Robson focuses on the cost in this article. The RCMP is paid $2.5 million per year for parliamentarians to have protection, up from $1.8 million last year and $1.4 million the year before that. Now, those costs aren't very high, but I do think we should pay attention to the signals that the state puts out about threat levels related to things like Palestinian protests. Like, you're an MP. Getting your office postered isn't exactly a threat, nor is it an abnormal form of protest. But these folks do need to stay within the reach of average people. It's a balancing act that there should be a public debate on. So, frankly, the really unacceptable part of the story is that parties aren't saying what is prompting them to increase security. They need to be transparent about that. Canadians do deserve to know why they are so worried about the safety of their politicians. Next, Mr. I blew $1 billion on the G20, Bill Blair, has told CTV that Canada's military spending is, quote, on a positive upward trajectory, unquote, though wouldn't commit to raising Canada's military spending to reach NATO's targets. Since 2014, NATO required members to spend 2% of its GDP on military, something that Canada has never been able to reach, not under the Liberals, nor did the Conservatives pretend that they were going to do it either in the short period of time from 2014 to 2015. The story write-up from Luca Caruso-Moro says that Blair said that they are committed to quote-unquote work towards that 2%. And to do so, well, Canada is spending more than $273 million on equipment for people who are currently in Latvia for some reason. There's no mention of all of the other money that national defense has been pouring into military spending in the last two years or so. And what did I say was how much we were spending on rural housing, like from earlier this week, $176 million? Why build new housing when we can spend $273 million, a whole $100 million more, on a short-range air defense system and anti-drone equipment in Latvia? You know, Canadians can live in that, right? Next, the Committee to Protect Journalists has released numbers from 2023 and found that of the 99 journalists who were killed around the world doing their job, a stunning 72 were Palestinians. That unbelievable number of journalists murdered by Israel pushed 2023 to be the deadliest year for journalists in the world in almost a decade. In addition to 72 Palestinians, there were also three Lebanese killed by the Israeli military and two Israeli journalists killed, at least one of whom was killed by Hamas. The number 99 is 44% higher than 2022's figures. And to put this figure into perspective, the 72 Palestinians that have been killed in three months, compare that to the 223 Iraqi journalists who were killed between the years 2002 and 2020. 148 journalists were killed in the Philippines from 1997 to 2023, and 145 journalists have been killed in Mexico from 1997 to 2023. The murder of Palestinian journalists is simply off the charts. Now, in Ukraine, there were two deaths of journalists in 2023. That was down significantly from 2022, when 13 journalists were killed. The Committee to Protect Journalists attributes this to better infield training and tighter accreditation rules for people who are operating in that war zone. And finally, the Associated Press is reporting that rhinos have returned to the Loisaba Conservancy for the first time in decades. 21 eastern black rhinos were moved there to try and give them more space and hopefully increase their populations. This was Kenya's largest ever rhino relocation. They had all been taken from one of three parks, including the Nairobi National Park. The distance from there to Loisaba Conservancy is about 300 kilometers. Daniel Ole Yankeri said this, quote, their numbers were severely impacted by poaching. Now our focus is on rejuvenating this landscape and allowing rhinos to breed, aiming to restore their population to its former splendor, unquote. To move them, the rhinos were all tranquilized and hauled, and each rhino weighs about one ton, so it was quite the operation. Kenya's black rhino population has gone from about 20,000 in the 1970s to just 300 in the mid-1980s because of poaching. Now, the population is back up to 1,000, which makes it the third largest cluster of black rhinos behind South Africa and Namibia. In total, there are only about 6,400 rhinos left in the world. 
Conservationists hope to get the black rhino population in Kenya back up to 2,000. Now, I've been talking about black rhinos. For white rhinos, well, the last two northern white rhinos on the planet, they live in Kenya. Scientists tried to transfer an embryo created in a lab and give it to a black rhino surrogate, but that pregnancy ended when the rhino died from an infection she acquired from a flood. Those are your headlines for Friday, February 16th. It is Friday. Oh, finally, end of the week. I hope that you get a weekend and that it starts tomorrow. But you know what? Even if you don't, I hope you get some extra time off at some point. I'm going to be on three planes tomorrow. So if you look at me on Twitter, I'm going to be probably complaining about flying because that's all you can do when you fly in this country. You are listening to this podcast at sandyandnora.com on the Real News Network podcast feed and anywhere you get your podcasts. I do hope you have a wonderful Friday. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll talk to you on the other side.